Hi, Bob. Hi. So, Bob, in all of the debates we put on, we try to, we try to pick issues where there's some kind of real trade-off. In, in, in this debate, what are the trade-offs that we're talking about? Well, the, the major one here, of course, the FDA's job is to see that drugs that come on market are both effective and safe. And that's a worthy goal. But the longer it takes to get a drug approved, the more arduous that process, the more people don't get the drug who might need it, in some cases with absolutely dire or fatal consequences. So there are huge costs to delay, just as there are huge benefits to uh, protecting the market from, from unsafe drugs. This agency that we're talking about, the Federal Food and Drug Administration, has roots that go back to 1906, uh, Teddy Roosevelt era. Science was at a different place then. How much is the advancement of science actually part of what this debate is about? Well, I, I think the advance of science is a very key part of the debate uh, because so many of the, uh, the drug uh, therapies operate today, operate on a molecular level where our genetic composition is an important determinant of how uh, the drug is going to affect our bodies. And that means that the old paradigm of trying to figure out a drug that uh, does good for everybody and harm to very few people is, is really kind of outmoded. The better paradigm today is the, the really custom-tailored drug that takes one's own individual genetic uh, uh, composition into effect. And the, the pro-the-motion side is probably going to say that the FDA simply hasn't adapted to that degree of scientific advance. What about the other side? Well, the other side is going to say this requires larger tests, bigger sample groups, mm -hmm. more amount of time uh, to really winnow out these individual differences in response. Well, we have four debaters who have not only been arguing this debate, but some of them have actually been involved with the FDA directly. So they're going to know what they're talking about. Let's welcome them to the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, our debaters. You're all doing great with the applause requirement. I, and, and because of that, I just want to ask you one more time to give a round of applause to Bob Rosencrantz. Thank you. So you open up a bottle of a prescription drug that your doctor told you you need to take to get better, that little brown bottle. You've got the pill in your hand, and you're putting it on your tongue, and you're about to swallow it when you hear a disturbingly familiar voice in your head, and that voice says this, you should not take this drug if you're not able to stand up or sit upright for 30 minutes, have severe kidney disease, low blood calcium, or allergic. Call your doctor right away if you develop new or worsening heartburn, difficult or painful swallowing, or chest pain. If you develop severe bone, joint, and or muscle side effects, and studies were generally mild and include stomach pain, indigestion, heartburn, or nausea. And what is that? That is FDA speak. That is the voice of Uncle Sam. Uncle Sam actually in the form of the Food and Drug Administration telling you to be careful, to exercise caution, because that is the mission of the Food and Drug Administration going back more than 70 years. But what if, as some say, the FDA is actually going too far, is overdoing it, is actually causing harm? Well, that sounds like a debate, so let's have it. Yes or no to this statement. The FDA's caution is hazardous to our health. A debate from Intelligence Squared US. I'm John Donvan. We have four superbly qualified debaters, two against two, who will be arguing for and against the motion. The FDA's caution is hazardous to our health. Our debate, as always, goes in three rounds, and then the audience votes to choose the winner, and only one side wins. Let's meet our debaters. First, Scott Gottlieb. He's a physician and former FDA deputy commissioner. His partner is Peter Huber. He is a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute. On the side arguing against the motion that arguing that the FDA's caution is not hazardous to our health, 
We'd like to introduce Jerry Avorn. He is a professor of medicine at Harvard Medical School. And his partner is David Challoner, a vice president for health affairs emeritus at the University of Florida. Our motion is the FDA's caution is hazardous to our health. Let's meet the team arguing for the motion. First, let's welcome, again, Scott Gottlieb. And Scott, um, you are a physician. You are a former FDA deputy commissioner. Uh, you've worn a lot of hats in your career, the jobs at the FDA. Uh, you're a doctor. You've also been an analyst on Wall Street at one point. Uh, I'm curious, what, what about medical school prepared you for Wall Street? Anatomy class? Perhaps? How to make important decisions based on imperfect information. Ah, <laughs> that is a very, very clever answer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Gottlieb. And uh, Scott, your partner is? The always provocative Peter Huber. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Huber. <laughs> Peter, you are also arguing for the motion. The FDA's caution is hazardous to our health. You're a senior fellow at the Manhattan Institute. Um, speaking of people doing a lot of different things, you have a doctorate in mechanical engineering from MIT. You have clerked for Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Sandra Day O'Connor. You write about energy and technology. Your forthcoming book, The Cure and Code, uh, is about drug policy. What have you not covered that you still need to get to in life? <laughs> well, mostly I'm just hoping to overcome my uh, intellectual att attention deficit disorder. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Huber, who claims to have defi attention deficit disorder. I think not. Our motion is the FDA's caution is hazardous to our health. And here to argue against the motion first, let's welcome Jerry Avorn. Um, Jerry, you hold a position at the Department of Medicine at Brigham and Women's Hospital as Chief of the Division of Pharmacoepidemiology and Pharmacoeconomics. Would it take you an hour to explain to us what those things mean? No. <laughs> it is the study of uh, balancing the risks and benefits and cost of medications as they're used in routine care of patients. Nine seconds. Ladies and gentlemen, Jerry Avorn. <laughs> and Jerry, your partner is? Oh, David Challoner. Ladies and gentlemen, David Challoner. <laughs> David Challoner is Vice President Emeritus for Health Affairs at the University of Florida. Uh, David, you did medical school, you got your MD, but then you decided uh, to, to spend your career not seeing patients day in and day out, but to go into the research side. Why, why did research pull you? Uh, I went to Harvard and my faculty told me I had to. <laughs> and in those days, you did what the faculty <laughs> told right. you to do. Ladies and gentlemen, David Challoner. Our motion is the FDA's caution is hazardous to our health. As always, we have you, the audience, choose our winner by your vote, and we have you vote twice, before the debate and once again afterwards. And the team whose percentage numbers have moved the most uh, will be declared our winner. So let's go to our first vote. If you go to those keypads at your seat, I'll restate the motion. And if I, as I restate it, you say, I agree with that, you push number one. And if you disagree, you push number two. And if you're undecided, which is a perfectly honorable position, by the way, you push number three. You can ignore the other keys. The FDA's caution is hazardous to our health. So I'll wait uh, 10 or 15 seconds while everybody does that vote. OK, it looks like. Uh, it was handled well. So let's move on to uh, the actual debate. And again, I'll remind you, we'll have you vote at the very end. And in terms of how long it takes to get the results, uh, it's under a minute. So uh, it'll be a very quick turnaround at the end. On to round one, opening statements from each debater in turn. They will be seven minutes each. The motion is the FDA's caution is hazardous to our health. And here speaking first, for this motion, Scott Gottlieb, he is a practicing physician, a resident fellow at the American Enterprise Institute, and former FDA Deputy Commissioner. Ladies and gentlemen, Scott Gottlieb. Thank you. To understand why FDA's caution is hazardous to our health, you have to appreciate FDA's growing focus on statistical outcomes over results for patients. Fading at FDA is a mindset of clinical medicine and patient care 
and has placed as a growing fixation on the statistical results of clinical trials.